Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome everyone. Now, this Makita Random Orbit Sander I bought two years ago. I did a review on it when I bought it, so it's sort of fresh out the box. And I also did a follow-up on this about a year ago. And I still get the odd question about it, but I've thought that now at the moment what I'm using on a proper project, I can give another follow-up and hopefully answer one or two more of the questions that have been coming through. Now the first few things I want to cover on this which may answer a few people's questions that they've got straight away. First of all, Screwfix are still selling these two years on and they're still listed at £45. To me that shows that these are certainly reliable. If they were a product that had been returned an awful lot, Screwfix would have dropped them. Obviously, I mean, two years down the line, Makita are obviously still happy with the range because they're still selling the exact same model. The orange, I have had some people say, well, that's not a Makita because it's orange. This is their DIY range. Now, in the UK, they're orange. I believe in some other countries, they might be a different color, but their professional range is that sort of bluey color. The second thing I get asked an awful lot about these is do the pads come flying off now this i damaged literally on the first time i used it and it was on an identical door to this that i when i sanded it off i sanded all the flat areas here i got done here i did the flat panels here but i made the mistake of using this of going up to the edges where it was butting up against these rims. And I'll show a photograph and hopefully you can see on the edge there, there is one sort of fairly damaged part on the pad. However, the pad on this fits just as well as it did from the, probably the day I bought it. I've got some dust build up on there, which I'm not too bothered about. That doesn't seem to affect it. But when I make sure this is stored away, I always make sure there's a pad on there because it just stops any wood shavings and whatever collecting on this, which is possibly what will cause a damage. So try and always keep that as clean as possible. Now, another thing I always get comments about is the dust. Um, my shed is absolutely full of dust at the moment. I've been sanding this door down uh, for a while. The other side is totally sanded, which is where a lot of the dust has been created. This bag on this sander, I actually emptied before I started this side of the door. So all as it's sanded is this surround of the flat frame and these two panels here. And that bag is certainly, I mean, it's certainly a good half full in there of really, really fine dust. Now the collection into the bag is just done via these holes in the middle of your pad here. And especially when you've got this emptied and you squash the bag the moment you switch the sander on it puffs up so quick there's actually quite an awful lot of suction there but anything that's sanded probably on the outsides here especially when this is rotating around the dust is going to come out the sides and there's no way that this is going to collect in the bag so don't use this if you're going to i mean there's no way i'd sand this door down say in my kitchen because it would just cover dust everywhere ideally you want to be somewhere either outside or somewhere where you don't mind a bit of dust. Now, when I did the other side of the door, I probably went through four or five sheets of sandpaper on this. And I've just thought I'd also give a little bit of a tip on here on how you can possibly reduce that amount of sandpaper you use. At the moment, I'm using 80 grit on here. This door has had some form of like a stain. When you sand it back to wood here, this, even with 80 grit, it is really, really smooth. It is a nice finish. This, however, because obviously the moisture it's gone into it as well and the thickness of the finish on here, it's really, really rough. So there's a fair bit to take off there before you start taking this bad. Now, the problem is what you get is when you especially go over this the first time, if you do too much sanding on it, you're likely to get, you're likely to get your paper clog up and I mean, it probably shows better on that disc there. Now, hopefully you can see on that bit of sandpaper there, all those black blotches on there. What that is, they're really, really hard pieces of this finish. When you sand them up, and you, especially when you build up the heat, it sort of like solidifies them a bit. And the heat then transfers them to the paper and they almost bake then to these hard spots. So one quick key point is when you do this, don't sort of sand the same area too much. Rather than let the heat build up too much as well, especially on your pad, take it off and then use one of these to clean 
this up. This is basically like a piece of rubber. If you Google sandpaper cleaner, uh, you'll come up with lots of different options on there. They are primarily designed for cleaning things like belt sanders. And the, good th and the reason for that is because you've got your belt spinning around and you can then run this over and it just runs over in one area. And the rubber basically helps clean out all the mess at the sandpaper. I use this on my belt sanders and especially my discs uh, an awful lot. My discs that I use on the lathe and my sanding boards, uh, it saves the life of the paper so much that I've rarely had to change the paper on it. Now the random orbit sander is a bit harder and trickier to do because the moment you switch this on, this doesn't spin round in a circle straight away. What the, the way the random orbit sander works is it's almost the motor is sort of like working at small circles on its own and it's only when this comes in contact with a surface that this starts uh, rotating. Now when I apply this to it until I get it in the right position and the right pressure on it is when you'll see the, the actual disc moving. Hopefully you can see then with using this sort of cleaner that it's brought this back to almost like new. Now I know this is a fairly new piece of sandpaper. I only changed it when I just finished off this last little piece up here that needed sort of three or four minutes sanding. So um, you would expect it to still look quite new, but I'm gonna give a demonstration now that this is freshly untouched. I've not sanded this bit whatsoever. And I'm going to sort of like skip over this with the sanding um, fairly quickly because I want to take off really that very top surface with all the shine and I don't want to take too much off in one go and heat it up because otherwise I will end up with those claggy bits that go rock hard on the sandpaper. Now that one hasn't got many on it and that's the one I changed off yesterday where I actually sanded well over half of this door on that piece of paper and the reason that's lasted so long is because I was cleaning the disc so much I wasn't allowing it to heat up but the inner part of the paper here now, which is where the bulk of the sanding is done, not the edges, has literally worn away. Now I'm going to put on some hearing protection on this because uh, I will be using this a fair bit today. So I'm going to give a demonstration on here now of quickly taking off this surface. And as I say, because it's the very top surface, I didn't want to do this very slowly because it will build up quickly and I will be using the cleaner as I go along. So now I've quickly skipped over there and hopefully you can see, I mean, this is 80 grit paper, fairly new. It's had a massive impact on really what that side is like compared to that side. This, hopefully you can see on here, is just basically covered with, with the dust. Now, that's really because I was going over fairly quickly. There was no heat generating on this pad whatsoever, but to now keep this pad in condition, good condition as well. I'll just use my cleaner. Now, because it's a random orbit sander and it's got that odd pattern of movement, that's why it's a bit harder to do the cleaning and why it's a bit more fiddly, but that paper has now come up looking as good as it was when I got it at the packet. I've just got some worn marks on the edge here and that must be probably because I just caught the edges on here somewhere, uh, which I've just got to be careful of because I don't want to damage this pad anymore. So rather than carrying on with that one, I'm just going to, especially while this is fresh sandpaper, I'm going to do the same with this one and then I can carry on taking that one back. So again, I cleaned the paper up and it's again, still look really new. I mean, getting more and more wear on the edges now. So that has really took off the bulk of that surface. 
there's still a bit of coarseness on there uh, because I mean you can obviously see the darker bits are where the wood is sunk uh, where it still has the finish on it uh, whereas the whiter bits are the bit where we should all risen on the grain from when it had the, f the finish first applied so i will now just carry on and hopefully you'll see now how quick and easy this takes this off and takes it right back to this this whole process might take me just a few minutes <laughs> Here's a good example of where these hard bits form and if you catch them early enough like that they will pop off so that's a case of just and i can feel the heat on this now that's really a case of where a lot of sanding on here has built up the heat and there's an awful lot of that finish coming off in one go so just catch your sandpaper early enough um, that's not a lot i can do about that one now that's gone really hard I'd, oh, uh, get that has dislodged. But hopefully that sort of saved the majority of the paper still. And I can carry on. But just, let's say, be careful. Uh, too much sanding on a thick finish will build those up and make the paper more useless. <laughs> Hopefully you can see there what's happened to the paper now. We've got, even at this stage, got rid of most of the stain on there and we've gone back to the bare wood, which is now why most of the dust on here is white, which doesn't cause these harder bits. So you can sand longer and the heat buildup isn't so bad, uh, but I'll still clean this now just to, to sort of like re revive the paper again uh, so I can carry on. So hopefully you can see how the, the sander works now and in a, in a proper situation. But that, having that rubber pad to clean the sandpaper off is a real lifesaver. I mean, to be honest, with just doing what I've done there, I could have probably almost got to the point where I need to probably throw that piece of sandpaper away had I not cleaned it off. I've only been using this for a few minutes and my hands can certainly feel I've been using the sander because of the vibration. It's not excessive, but you'll find that if I use this for probably an hour, I will really feel it more in my hands. And it takes probably about five minutes or so for your hands to sort of all of a sudden fully recover. Uh, so the, there is a vibration in there, but it's it's not excessive. The longer you use any power tool for any way, you're going to get that vibration come through your hands. And it's more so with a random orbit sander because you've got to think when you pick up say like a drill or probably most ordinary sanders even like a belt sander everything is going around in one consistent direction in one rotation there's sort of no difference in the gravitational pulls on the way the forces are coming out from what's being driven but when you're using a random orbit sander because it's being shook in all sorts of directions uh, it's doing little circular motions in order to then create the bigger spin it's naturally going to put an awful lot more vibration in there so you've got to expect that from a random orbit sander so hopefully this has been a, a useful update for you um, i would certainly say though that if this sander broke on me now when i went to carry on with this i'm so pleased with it and especially for 45 pounds i'll be straight back to screw fix and go and buy myself another one uh, that's what i think of the quality of these sanders thanks a lot for watching